We are still at a pretty busy PDAC in Toronto. In the background, you see a lot of people moving around, having a lot of meetings and discussions and finding out who is the best story here in town in Toronto. Actually, I think I have one of the best stories with me already. And I'm happy to talk with uh, Stephen Roman. He is the CEO of uh, a very good company he has built over the last couple of years, which is Global Atomic and uh, he will explain to us what is the business model behind because he has combined actually two businesses he has started some uh, more than 10 years ago now under Global Atomic and uh, we would like to know more about it and I'm happy to talk with Stephen. Hi Stephen, good I to see you be. again. Yeah, good to see you. Last time we saw you was in London. That's right. Uh, Stephen, you have a two-pillar business model as I call it and uh, I like that uh, actually uh, but uh, can you briefly explain what is behind those two businesses you have built over the past 10 years? So one of them is uh, a zinc business. It's uh, headquartered in Turkey. We have an operating plant there with a very solid uh, partner called Befeza Zinc. They trade on the Frankfurt Exchange actually. Uh, they did an IPO this year and uh, they're the best in the world at this type of zinc recycling business. So we brought them into the project because they're the best operators. We have a 49% interest, they have a 51% interest. So this business that we started in 2009 has been profitable since we started. And now that zinc is at $1.50 per pound, of course, is generating a lot of very good free cash flow, positive cash flow. And uh, of course, the uh, zinc business and the steel business in Turkey has been rising up uh, since the markets have turned around. So very profitable business. We combined it with our uranium company. It was called Global Atomic Fuels Corporation, where we have an exceptional high-grade deposit that we've discovered in the Republic of Niger. And uh, we have now merged it, and we call the new company Global Atomic Corporation. Okay. So this will be effectively the, the a, a very good, positive, cash-flowing uh, company with two divisions, uh, a base metals division and a uranium division. That's uh, actually a very good business model. Let's talk first about, again, uh, the recycling uh, business. Um, you are not the operator, as you said. That means uh, you are a 49% stakeholder. Do you get a dividend then from the operation or how does it work for your global shareholders? For Global, we get a uh, monthly management fees and commissions from sales of zinc concentrate. Our biggest uh, customer is Nearstar, they're a big smelting company. So we get that monthly and then annually when we declare uh, a dividend, uh, a cash disbursement, we get basically what we've produced during the year as a, as a one-time payment. So we have our annual meeting now scheduled in Turkey for uh, this month in March. So in April, we should receive our dividends from 2017 operations. And what number do you expect? Can you already arm wave a little bit and give us an idea? Oh, I think uh, we're going to be well north of 5 million US. It would be our share for last year. Uh, it could be significantly higher than that and of course, this year in 2018, uh, we're running at full capacity. It should be even higher than that. That's nice. That's uh, very good. So actually, you can use that cash inflow for your exploration activities and development activities uh, in Nitro. So uh, let's talk about a little bit more about that project you have uh, also started uh, more than 10 years ago. Um, give us an idea what potential do you see there? What is so outstanding and what are the uh, advantages to be in uh, West Africa? Well, West Africa, of course, is very underexplored, particularly the Tim Mersoy Basin in Niger, which is one of the largest uranium uh, basins in the world. Uh, the France is getting 30% of their uranium supply from this area, and their two operating mines are just north of us. So about 80 kilometers north of us. Of course, they've been operating there since 1970, so all the infrastructure is there the main roads, the power lines. Our deposit was discovered not too far from the main road. So from an in infrastructure point of view, we have excellent infrastructure. Uh, we now have four drill rigs on site, so we're drilling off the initial mineable area. 
And last July, we signed a deal with Arriva. It's called now Orano. Oh, wow, okay. And we will be supplying them with ore from our operation uh, starting probably mid next year. I mean, I know you as a company builder, a mine builder, an operator. And obviously, with hard gold, you do another very important and interesting uh, gold company. But are you going to build an own mine in, uh, in West Africa? Or can you only ship that uh, yellow cake down to this uh, Arriva plant? Well, we will be shipping run of mine ore. So just we, we blast the rock, put it in a truck, and take it there. They pay us based on spot prices for the uranium that's contained in the rock. So this is the way to get the project going. Similar we did with Hart Gold when we did a deal with Barrick Gold. We did our bulk sampling program and we shipped 70,000 tons to Barrick. That allowed us to develop the mine, open it up, get the production started, get the cash flow started. This is the same kind of model. So we can do that except it's easier because it's an open pit. It requires less capital. We bring a contractor in there, they dig and they bring ore. Eventually, when uranium prices start moving up, we can think about building our own plant uh, and expanding the production base. This is a very large, high-grade deposit. Uh, of course, it comes to surface because we're going to be mining as an open pit initially. And, uh, you know, it, it will be profitable even at today's uranium price. Even at today's uranium price. So, so that, that, that's... Uh even better, right? A lot of uh, companies cannot really make money, but uh, maybe you have one big plus point. You don't have that uh, overhead with uh, an operation. So uh, if you can ship it down and how, how is the infrastructure? Can you really use the roads for that big uh, transportation? Yes, the roads are, are very good. It's a paved road because uh, Orano, formerly Arriva, they've been using that road to ship their final product, yellow cake from their mines in Arlit all the way to uh, Niamey and down to the port of Cotonou on the Gulf of Guinea. So uh, we would use the same infrastructure. So we don't have to spend money on infrastructure. We don't have to spend money on a plant. So it's a very quick and easy operation to get into production. What a big uh, advantage. Uh, recently you have announced some true results. So obviously this year is uh the focus of doing some uh, infill drilling to increase the resource, uh, maybe come up with another resource definition. So uh, let's uh, explain us what are you doing in this year at the project, uh, especially with exploration. So right now we're drilling, uh, as I mentioned, four drill rigs. We're focusing on the initial open pitable area so that we can complete our feasibility study for that mining operation. And we're also doing drilling along strike and down dip uh, for exploration. So right now, overall, we have about 120 million pounds of contained uranium here in this DASA deposit. But it's, it's open. So we, we feel that there's a lot of potential to uh, greatly expand the size of this thing. Uh, and of course, uh, with the grade being so high, it makes it uh, much more exciting. Uh, let's dig into another uh, part of the business. I mean, we are from Germany, from Europe. You know, we are a little bit green with our government and everybody looking for renewable energy. Um, obviously, energy is needed for this uh, e-mobility, uh, I will call it. Everybody want to drive uh, in the future any electric car. Um, what do you think um, of the energy market uh, and uh, actually the buyer of ur uranium? Is that uh, something which you think uh, will increase rather than decrease in the future? Wolfgang, it's absolutely going to increase because the uh, reactor build currently in the world is the highest it's ever been and China will become the largest operator of nuclear reactors in the world. So they had no nuclear reactors uh, not too long ago. And now they have a very aggressive plan to build up to 200 nuclear reactors. 200. India is, is not too far behind that. Saudi Arabia is building reactors. South Africa is building reactors. There's many reactors being built. 
So uranium goes through its cycles. Unfortunately, it's in a down market now because of Fukushima. But uh, we feel that over the next two to three years, the prices should be coming up back into a normalized level. And of course, with all these new reactors coming on stream, uh, it's going to require much more fuel. Of course, uranium and nuclear reactors are uh, required as a base load power for the world. Everyone thinks that we should have at least 30% base load power coming from nuclear. It emits no CO2, so it's non-polluting. And with everyone going to electric vehicles and electric everything, how are they going to charge these batteries? They have to plug into something that's reliable. So, you know, we love solar, we love wind, but that won't handle all of the power requirements on the planet. So we are contrarian, so we believe in the uranium price. Obviously, we have uh, the right story, the right asset, plus your other business model, a good combination. I really think uh, your company has a good uh, future. And uh, thank you very much for the interview, and I wish you all the best with the next activities, and hopefully we can have an interview soon. Thank you, Wolfgang. Always a pleasure. All the best.